Hey everybody, I think it's been like over a year since I've done a specific country's backpacking tips video. I just want to say nothing in this video is sponsored, woo! So any recommendations or mentions I give are genuinely my honest opinion. Yeah, honesty. So without further ado, here are my backpacking tips for Panama. Panama looks like this. It's a sort of long wiggly shape. On the left hand side you've got Costa Rica and over on the right hand side you've got Colombia. Colombia is in South America making Panama the gateway to Central America. Now because I started in Panama to travel the rest of Central America, I didn't explore anything this side of Panama City, so I'm afraid I can't tell you about this general side right here. I'm sorry about that, but I don't want to make things up, and I promise that if I do ever explore that side of Panama, I will 100% tell you everything about it. But right now, that's irrelevant. We're going to start in Panama City and work our way west. So Panama City, if you're flying into Panama, this is most likely going to be your starting point. So the first thing you're going to want to think about is, okay, how am I going to get to my hostel? I personally would just recommend going by taxi. Do not get ripped off though. Negotiate a price with the taxi driver before you get in the taxi and it shouldn't cost more than about 30 US dollars. This was our first mistake. We just hopped in on any old taxi in a delirious state from the plane, didn't negotiate a price. When we got to our destination they charged us 45 dollars. Don't let this happen to you. And although it is significantly cheaper I would only recommend getting a chicken bus if you have done it before and your Spanish is particularly good, the chicken buses are, shall we say, very hectic in Panama City. Once you have settled down into your hostel and are ready to start exploring, unless you particularly dislike walking long distances, I would strongly suggest putting on a comfy pair of shoes and making your way around the city by foot. There is a giant coastal walkway called Cinta Costera. This gives you the most amazing view of the city. It like passes along the front of all the skyscrapers and this would always be the starting point in our day. So we'd walk along there and then wherever we wanted to go we'd head uptown into the city that way. If you do need to get from one side of the city to the other in a short space of time, I would recommend getting a taxi again. But don't let them charge you more than $5 for a journey across town. It should never cost you more than this. The same journey on a chicken bus costs around half a buck, but again, if your Spanish is not great and you don't even know where you're going, the money saving does not justify the hassle. What not to miss in Panama City? Panama Canal. It's a wonder of the modern world, so come on, you can't miss it. Cerro Ancon. This gives you the best view of an urban city I have ever seen and don't forget to look out for sloths along the way. And Casco Viejo is the historic part of town so marvel at the ruins and get yourselves cultured folks! I can recommend the hostel where I stayed, it was called Villa Vento Surf Hostel, it was sociable, it was cheap, it had a pool and I'll link it down below. Panama Backpacker Hotspot Numero Dos is the lovely town of Boquete. Although there is not much to do in the actual town of Boquete, it is the hub to many beautiful hikes and activities. Like seriously, you can hike waterfalls, hike volcanoes, go to hot springs, go white water rafting, like the list goes on. I can again recommend the hostel which I stayed in, which was called Mama Yena Hostel. It's in the centre of town, it's clean, the staff are friendly, and there are free pancakes for breakfast. <laughs> I must mention though, they organise and advertise a lot of tours which are very expensive which you can actually do by yourself for a lot cheaper, so that's just some food for thought, something to bear in mind. Hotspot numero tres is Bocas del Toro. Over here on the Caribbean coast there are a collection of beautiful islands. To get there you must catch a water taxi from the town of Alicante. In the actual town of Bocas, the only great thing about it is the nightlife. It is incredibly lively. My favourite bar was Aqua Lounge. You had to catch a one dollar water taxi to get over there, but there were swings over the ocean. There was a slack line over the ocean. It was so cool. If you ask your hostel or any travel agent, they will help you book day tours to any of the beautiful islands nearby. As you may have seen from my vlogs, we went to Isla Bastimentos, which was absolutely stunning. I stayed in a hostel called Casa del Toro. I can recommend it because it was really cheap and the owner was so, so nice. However, it was incredibly small and not much went on there. If you want to be in the centre of things and in a more sociable hostel, the main strip is Calle Tres A or 
Road 3A. Now those were the places that I went to, but other stopovers include Santa Catalina, a small town with an amazing surf and laid back beach life, and also the Lost and Found Hostel. This is in the absolute middle of nowhere, but it's one of the best rated hostels in the whole of Central America. It is the hub to the most amazing treks and adventures. It's based right in the middle of the jungle and I really wish I stayed there. Travelling by rail is not really a thing and internal flights are extremely expensive, so getting around Panama is most commonly done by public bus. You can book these on the day of travel by going to the bus station that your bus is departing from and your hostel should definitely help you find this. Okay, so now budgeting and money. The currency in Panama is the Panamanian Balboa and conveniently one Panamanian Balboa is equivalent to one US dollar. Even easier, Panama accepts US dollars as a form of payment almost everywhere. In the hotspots, the price of a decent hostel averages around $12. Food I would always buy at what is called a funda. It sells a decent sized portion of the local cuisine for about $2. And for water, apparently it was safe to drink the tap water, however I didn't quite trust that, so I would always buy bottled water, which costed around a dollar for a litre. So food and drink budget, tended to be around $8 a day. Buses from city to city range from about $10 to $20 and saying you're taking these every couple of days, I would budget $5 a day for travel. And activities, I found that hiking and surfing were generally the main activities in Panama, so not overly expensive. I'm going to go with $15 a day for activities, which brings us to a grand total of $40 a day to budget for backpacking in Panama. Just so you know, there is a risk of malaria in Panama. Malaria is something that you can't get vaccinated against, so you must take tablets. There are a variety of anti-malarial tablets on the market that you can take. Although it is the most expensive, my personal favourite is Malarone because you get the least side effects. Not everyone who I met was taking malaria tablets. Obviously, it is a personal choice, but for Panama, it is recommended. Panama is one of the least visited countries in Central America, and also the place where we bumped into the least Brits. I think we bumped into, like, one other group, which in my experience of backpacking is very rare. But I've got to say I'm so glad we did visit Panama because it was absolutely beautiful. It has some of the best hikes, beautiful beaches, the locals were absolutely lovely. I definitely recommend adding it as a destination on your bucket list. If you found this video helpful, which I hope you did, please give it a thumbs up. Next video will hopefully be the first vlog from Costa Rica, which is exciting. I'm having a few problems with my hard drive at the moment, but I will hopefully get it up as soon as possible. <sighs> okay, bye! If they know that you know exactly what you're doing, they ain't messing with no clueless tourists.